Hi, everybody. Welcome back. I know that I said I would put an API gateway endpoint up in the Twitch chat, but you're going to have to give me right a, a few more minutes once I get off stage. Uh, but I promise you can ping that endpoint. Uh, I want to talk about how maybe we could start launching some functions a little more easily. So I'm here on stage with Salomon and Hector. Um, and you guys are going to uh, introduce yourselves and kind of tell us about serverless app repo, which is a pretty darn cool thing. All right, cool. Thanks, Randall. Um, so my name is Salman. I'm the service leader of the serverless app repo. Um, been doing this for a little while. And what we really wanted to do is really extend what we had built with uh, Lambda Blueprints, where there were simple template functions, but extend that to the entire serverless ecosystem, helping customers rapidly get set up with serverless applications, including a Amazon API Gateway APIs, functions and DynamoDB tables. So this ranges from code samples to components of backends to complete applications published by developers, partners, and, um, and companies in the AWS ecosystem. So we built this so that customers can get started with serverless even faster. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. And so let, let's get a demo of it. Absolutely. So cool. this is my account already whitelisted for the preview. So when we create a new function now, you have a new option called serverless application repository. So if I click down here and I look for, let's say, Kinesis, as soon as it shows up, you will be able to see all the applications already built. And you can also see how many deployments that application was already had. Oh, wow. So if I click and actually, let's say use something like uh, Python. Because, well, Rondon and I, we agree that Python is like, the best language, right? So anyway. <laughs> so, I'm mean, oh, oh, not oh, surprised. Oh, hold on. I think the world agrees with this. <laughs> so as soon as we actually well, get this page, cool. we <laughs> cool. you actually get to ask, what is the parameter for the function? Or any other parameters should deploy this application? It's Fubara. So I'm just going to say human, because some people like cats, right? So if we actually go over here, we can find more metadata about that application. You can find who the author is, where is the source code, any labels, how you can easily find that application. So you can verify a little bit what's in there, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And more importantly, you can even find the permissions. Yeah. Exactly. What permissions that application needs. That's cool. And you can even find the SAM template. So use the SAM Excellent. underneath. And even if there's any documentation in there. So I guess that's a kind of a to-do list now. <laughs> <laughs> that's on your to-do list, I right? The readme, that's, that's right. <laughs> totally. If I click readme is a work in progress, always. <laughs> if I click on deploy now, you'll be able to see that behind the scenes, actually, it's deploying normal SAM behind, normally as any developer right. would do. The difference here is that we make so much easier to find and discover applications. So it's CloudFormation under the hood then? Yeah, it is normal SAM that you right. define. Let me show you how you should do you, publish Do you want to say quickly what SAM for the people on that? Absolutely. Yeah. SAM is a serverless application model that basically abstracts CloudFormation and makes it so much easier to write and define your serverless application. Yeah, cool. If I go ahead and try to publish a new one, this is how the experience looks like. You define an application name, let's say human cat, and you find the author, and then can give some description, additional metadata in there. The labels we've used to find that application is right here. So you can say probably microservice, Python rocks, uh, Lambda, or something. And you, you can also define your license. Maybe it could be MIT, it could yeah. be GPL. You can find your, you know, your README, that's why the heart. And at the bottom, we actually define the SAM template. That's exactly where we get the code, and we define the SAM template overall, and we deploy using CloudFormation. Yeah, a couple of interesting points here. For the SAM template, once you upload your code into the repo, you don't have to manage that template nor the actual artifacts that go with it. The service copies them over, keeps them secure, so that when customers use your applications or in organizations that are sharing applications amongst each other, can do that reliably and never have to worry about, will that code ever not be there? Yeah, totally. Actually, that raises an interesting point. A lot of enterprises ask, I have lots of developers who are beginning with serverless. How do I provide them some sort of a piece of code or scaffolding so everyone can start from somewhere yeah. already? That's exactly how we could solve this problem. If I go back now to my function, you can see that has been deployed, and you can see very easily. If I go to my Lambda functions now, I will be able to see my function exactly as it normally should be. And I can even see the awesome Cloud9 integration inside the console. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Does it yeah. mean that when you upload your SAM template, you also have a verification of syntax and things like this? That's right. So we validate the SAM template when it comes in. Uh, we have a new me mechanism of providing a more secure way with template policies. We have that in our documentation on how you can really scope your applications down to specific resources you need versus more open policies, helping protect our customers uh, that way. And um, we do the validation on, the, on when you publish. Very cool. Yeah. And if you want to get started, here we go. If you go to aws.serverless slash serverless repo, you will be able to find this page. There's a big button here, sign up for preview. Get That's the call to action. Yeah. So we have a question from the Twitch stream from yeah. yep. Hevel Batin, uh, which is, can we compare SAM to frameworks such as Chalice, serverless? Are they comparable? 
Uh, and I actually want to say that I think Sam is kind of a level above all of that, right? Because it's 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 an orchestrating layer, and there there are components of Chalice and these other uh, uh, parts, uh, serverless, Zappa, things like that, that have really great, super compelling features. But you're not uh, you're not building typically more than just the code for that function when you launch these services. So why, what do you think about that? Yeah, absolutely. So when you think about Chalice or Zappa, for instance, they are very application specific. Yes. Uh, actually, that works for for Python, for instance. Service framework or some, they are completely language agnostic. Right. So. SAM is actually very low level, where you can actually use CloudFormation templates, so reuse the existing knowledge you have in-house, and it's supported by AWS. And on top of that, you also have some local to actually enhance your local development experience. So uh, frameworks like Serverless and Chalice and Zappa, they could all use SAM to be their deployment that's right. mechanism. That, that, totally. That's absolutely right. We, we feel that this is sort of a, uh, an interesting uh, path where these frameworks can actually use SAM to improve the ecosystem for, for all developers, for sure. At the end of the day, the service frameworks out there are to actually enable the developers to get started more easily with serverless functions anyway. There's a question now from Abon TV that uh, is there an incentive for developer to publish to the repo? So, you know, we've talked to a lot of customers before we launched the service, and yeah. one of the things that they were telling us that they sell and support services on AWS, or they want to sell or support services on AWS, mm -hmm. and what this can enable them to do is get that foot in the door. Yeah. Build something that's interesting for your customers, and then those customers would want to want more, see more of that. So a lot of our partners, like Splunk, like here, like yeah. SignalFX, like Datadog, have already published applications in the repository right. to enable their customers to do more with, with serverless architectures. And we're seeing that pattern as soon as we uh, went live from other companies um, who want to follow suit in that. So the incentives are, um, you know, there is going to be this path eventually in deeper integration with the AWS marketplace and how that monetization looks like. But a lot of our customers, like this is a great way for me to showcase my ability and my work to a very large set of AWS customers. Uh, I'm and sure Randall and Anto are already here. <laughs> I, I think <laughs> I've already <laughs> submitted totally. at least 10 different applications <laughs> to be included. <laughs> For what it's worth, most of my applications involve selfies or chatbots. Oh, well, that's um, great. That's I will fine. be deploying them today. <laughs> So it's selfies like, of oh you can okay cool yeah so what I do is I, I have a function that if you upload a selfie to an S3 bucket yeah. it will trigger a lambda function uh -huh. which will trigger recognition and then it will upload those stats into DynamoDB cool um, and then you can find out that of all the selfies you've ever taken your average age is 43 <laughs> um, according to recognition well that may be actually accurate for us at this point <laughs> yeah we've aged this yeah, we've Cool. So, are there any other questions from the Twitch stream? Um, what does Sam offer in terms of DX, offline, CLI? Uh, and I Sam local. Sam local. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So, Sam, Sam local, if, if you can look at my screen, for instance, Sam local, what it does is actually oh it's. It's the only dependency it has is a Docker container. So it actually emulates Lambda functions locally, huh. including API Gateway. So if you go to GitHub slash AWS Labs slash some local, you'll be able to read your Sun template that you defined, what your function looks like, where is the source code. It reads from that template, and it simulates the local developing experience for you. Can you show us uh, so a little bit uh, what's the Sun template looking like? Absolutely. A little bit, yeah, uh, I have one further. here, actually. I so love the comparison of a traditional template. Is my mic dead? It goes on and off, so. Yeah. Show. I. Am I all set? Okay, I love the the the. Um, am I? I'm being remiked here. I love the uh, comparison of a regular CloudFormation template, which is you know, 70, 80 lines, 100 lines, a million lines, into a SAM template, which is like 15 lines. It's just amazing. Totally. So this is actually a Sun template. So when you look at a normal CloudFormation template, you wouldn't be able to see serverless column, column. So this is exactly the Sum in this case. So, so that's an abstraction for It is an abstraction. So basically this, only like 15 lines, more or less, you would explode to lots of lines in CloudFormation, and it would deploy those resources. Yeah. If you actually look at it here, it's nothing more but a Python application. And then at the bottom, we are not even specifying, actually, the whole CloudFormation template for API Gateway. We just say, this function will be called by an API and whatever method we call it. Shouldn't you uh, close your curly bracket? Well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Problem solved. That would be have caught by, the, by actually by the sub template validation, the server is repo. Oh, is I love that was my moment uh, of faith. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I mean, th these are just super powerful services, and I'm really excited to see what people build with them. Yeah. I, I, one of the things that I really enjoy about uh, SAM and the local CLI is that I work with a lot of different event types in my day job, uh, where 
you know, the S3 event type is not the same as the Kinesis record event type, or it's not the same as the API gateway proxy record event type. So the SAM local, if you just want some sort of reference event to, to test your function with, it's AWS, or it's, it's SAM local, or even just SAM, uh, generate event, generate dash event, yeah. and then the type of event you want. S3, Kinesis, that's right. API that's Gateway. That's right. and, and just working from that is so much easier than having to like open up my browser, Google for the reference it is, and. Uh, and just to one, uh, reinforce, SAM is also open sourced, and the reason we did that was we wanted to the overall ecosystem sort of contribute and make that better and more easier for our customers. So, um, you know, this is this is our playback to open source. And then when it gets to the local invocations and stuff, you actually it runs in a Docker container, a, a simulated environment for, for Lambda, yeah. Lambda and also API gateways. So you can hit local endpoints like one two seven zero zero eight 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 eighty eighty, and you can say, I want this to pretend to be my API gateway, and it can do all of the traditional things that That's you would right. do in Absolutely. these functions. Local debugging and all that log tracing, etc. Even even step through debugging, you can That's do true. so. You can That's attach true. debuggers, and, That's and right. just the, the the suite of features that they have for this has just exploded, and it is open source. Yeah. And you can go and look in the GitHub issues, and you can see you guys have been hard at work <laughs> responding to every <laughs> single issue, and they're like, people will submit something. Like, hey, I would like this idea. Could you build this? Yeah, we have and a whole team dedicated now just to support that, support that ecosystem now. And then three days later, it's in the tool. <laughs> it's <laughs> totally. amazing. Cool. I, I've I've worked with a lot of different tools and you know CLIs at AWS over the years, and it's just really crazy to see the the insanely fast fast paced innovation. I, I, I on think Randall, you're seeing that because a lot of customers are excited about serverless. Yeah. I, I think right? so. And so that prompts them to kind of figure out ways that they can easily solve their problems with a serverless repo, exposing interesting example applications, full blown applications with SAM and SAM CLI. We're providing a whole set of tool chaining and discovery mechanisms to get customers started with serverless. And so pretty excited and so let's see what customers do with it. I have a question actually because sure. now we have you on stage. Where do you see serverless going? I mean, it's an open question, but. You know, I, I think we, w the way we think about serverless is how do we enable more of our customers to do a lot more with the serverless compute platform? And uh, it's not a surprise, Andy talks about it, like our roadmaps are defined exactly where customers want us to go in terms of the kind of compute cap capabilities they want, kind of availability and scale they want, about the features and language support they want. We just announced support for Go that's coming in January. So where, where we're going is where our customers tell us to go, and so we encourage you to keep on giving us feedback and uh, helping us make the products better for you. Totally. So we have a couple of questions from the stream that uh, we'll take. Uh, NYC Kid 80, uh, and if you are actually in New York City, represent. <laughs> um, okay. NYC Kid 80, uh, Cloud9 hooked into building SAM, absolutely. Yes. So when you start a new function in Cloud9, it just brings up a SAM template. That's and correct. Super That's correct. powerful. Yeah, it's already integrated from day one. That's and cool. then yeah. LBL ET Tour would like to know about <laughs> Swagger. So what about Swagger? Uh, Anything just said particular? Something so, about, so uh, I'll explain. Swagger is a, an open specification for APIs. It allows you to generate SDKs, all kinds of other stuff. Uh, and what they do is within a SAM template, you can actually include a Swagger, Swagger file. file and it'll yep. Uh, yeah, that ultimately maps to an API gateway API. SAM just makes, enables you to actually put a Swagger definition of your APIs. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I actually occasionally do drop down into Swagger because I want uh, to generate an SDK for the API afterwards. Right. Uh, and you don't even really need to do that because once you deploy to API Gateway, you can just go to the API Gateway tab and right. click yeah. Download SDK. That's right. But the reason that I do it locally sometimes is that I do not want to like spend uh, a bunch of time getting all of my IAM credentials and everything right. So I just do it all locally, generate the SDK, sure. and then I deploy it to to uh, to uh, the API gateway, and I, I have no authentication because nothing I build is production. Um, <laughs> And my SDK do not just works. Security engineers <laughs> know that. Not that run no actually yes. production uh, I, I <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I, I think that's it for questions. Oh, uh, Chubzor would like to know what do you guys think about the n new Lambda console? Well, if you ask me, I'm opinionated and biased at this point, but uh, we we like it. And once ag once again, I think that's driven by what our customers are asking. A more integrated tool chain set within Lambda where they already are. So we're bringing Cloud9 into it. We're bringing uh, logging, quick logging into it. We're supporting so support for serverless repository. And you see a pattern and a trend that way that we will have serverless uh, in places where it's relevant so our customers are not spending time figuring out what they need to do versus getting the stuff they want to get done. done. You're talking quick logging. Uh, can you say what it is? It's a, it's a new feature which enables you to sort of look at your logs rather quickly versus going into CloudWatch. So, right. so that feature comes in right into the um, Lambda console experience. That's, that's good. That's awesome.
All right, I think we are out of time. Guys we have a, and girls, we have another set of people coming up just now to give a whole other, I, there's so many launches this year. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Uh, I think we are ready. So okay. thanks All again, right. everybody. Thanks. thanks for joining. Thanks. Feel Thank free you. to ask more well, questions on the Sign stream. Up.